Well, its impact in society, in my view, will be, as I started out saying, that we will move from cancer as a killer disease to having cancer as both a curable and most definitely a chronic disease, much as many other diseases are today. And finally, the future is expensive. Thank you very much. Scientists to do this work? 
The short answer to that is no, we don't. Um, and it's actually uh, one of the biggest challenges to our educational system, um, one that nobody has found the answer to yet. Um, I think we're still too traditional in our education of science, and we don't, um, in my view, make it exciting and applied enough. Um, and I think we should strive to do that. We should also open up opportunities for entities such as the Cancer Research Centre um, to actually be seen by people doing their A-levels such that they can begin to understand the impact of science on humanity. And it's when you see chemists, you know, beginning, organic chemists beginning to work with somebody like me uh, on the development of a molecule, or a biologist, you know, who's working on, let's say, um, the EGFR receptor, um, that you begin to understand how you, it's, it's not one brain anymore, it's 10, 20 brains and more and more. But the reality is, um, science is at a very, very exciting age and era, one that actually has cha challenges that go beyond science itself. But it is people in this room that are going to make the impact and make the difference that I'm talking about, both scientifically, medically, and both. Say it was a very thorough talk. It was fascinating. I was completely uh, involved in it, and I think my brain hurts a little at the end of it because there's so many different aspects to it. From the point of view of students, we've seen how the practical application of your knowledge here. You heard the words DNA, RNA, nucleotides, uh, mitosis, and meiosis, much loved by A level and GCSE students, and the practical applications of this. The relevance to real life to medicine as it's practiced. Secondly, we've seen how uh, relevant this is to uh, the treatment of patients in the community. 20 years ago, when I started in practice, cancer meant death. It was synonymous with death. If you told somebody they had a diagnosis of cancer, you had to make sure they were sitting down first. We've seen here today with Professor Johnson's talk how we have moved on from that, and in fact, what he said was, we want to make cancer into a chronic disease, just like asthma or diabetes, heart disease, something that you don't die from, simply another chronic disease that you take medicine or treatment for. Indeed, as he mentioned, the relevance with um, I'm a GP, with, with uh, pra real practice in primary care. Um, on my desk at the moment are guidelines for referral of patients with uh, relative, who have relatives with ovarian cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancer. So those guidelines are on my desk at the moment for me to use to refer well people, people with no disease but who have a relative or more than one relative with say early breast cancer. And again that has huge implications uh, not only for decision making but for the outcomes for these people because there should be an improvement in their quality of life and their, and their uh, duration of life. Thirdly, I think the, there's a key message here in terms of the organisation of the health service. This isn't just about primary care GPs or what we call secondary care, which is often Kelvin, or what we call tertiary care, which is the big buildings that Paddy described in Belfast. It, it's about the integration of, of all of these, the integration of research and clinical care, and the huge amount of investment that's required for this because a significant part of the wages that you earn in the future will go towards the health service. So the tax you pay will go towards the health service that hopefully will give you a longer life with a better quality. So we've seen here really today uh, an explanation of where we're going in terms of the early diagnosis of cancer, the tailored treatments of cancer, treatments that are tailored specifically for your cancer for you as an individual with that genetic code and for improving the quality of life and, and outcomes. Finally then, we've had a fascinating talk from Professor Johnson. We've had really powerful insights into where we're going in terms of cancer research and treatment in the future. And I'd like you to join me now in thanking him for such a wonderful talk. Thank you.
thanks to the audience for their very close and quiet attention. Thank you. Reverend Father, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what's more frightening as President of the Union than talk about cancer or a smiling Chancellor of the Exchequer in presented to us. Because when I was a student here, I, I learned the words of Benjamin Franklin that death and taxes cannot be avoided. I spent most of my adult life helping people to avoid tax, whereas Professor Johnson and, and Tom have become more useful members of society in which helping people to improve the quality of life. And then we heard Professor Johnson, who's at the cutting edge of research and science, I tell you something fairly important, and it is that that cutting research does not have to be done at Harvard or at Stanford. It can be done here by you in Northern Ireland. That's a challenge for each and every one of you. Last year, when Father Martin, myself, and the Union Committee set out to map out this lecture series, we were very conscious of the need for science and medicine to be as one of the main uh, topics. You've heard Father Martin say that uh, the two lectures we've had so far uh, by past pupils of the school, uh, Professor Seamus Heaney, Bob McLaughlin, have uh, uh, and now the third one by also a past pupil, uh, Professor Johnson. We in the Union are delighted uh, to have had such a series. And today I am absolutely delighted that the choice of medicine has been completely vindicated. Because what we've had has been a splendid, informative and inspiring lecture by one of our most distinguished alumni, Professor Johnson. On behalf of the Union, thank you very much. And finally, uh, to mark that in the audience, I call upon a Year 13 student, uh, Joseph Wodge. Last year, Joseph was first placed in Northern Ireland GCSE in double award science. He is one of the people we hope will be possibly in the buildings of the future to conduct the research of the future to help me stay alive longer to help tax dodgers in the future. <laughs> Joseph, you come to the, the, the podium to make a presentation to Professor Johnson. Thank you very much. And finally, after all of that, you'll be relieved to know there's a cup of tea inside. Thank you very much for your attendance.